and protect ourselves. I give you another example. Peter talked about in 2 Peter chapter 2 the man named Lot. And when he's dealing, when he's talking in the chapter about how God deals with those that have sinned, the angels and, and those in Noah's day, he gets down to Lot and he makes this statement right here. He talks about the fact that Lot was a righteous man that vexed his soul from day to day with the conversations of the wicked. And he made this statement as well. In the seeing and the hearing... It, it vexed his soul. It grieved him. Now, here's what we know, or here's what we should not assume. There is no indication that Lot ever participated in the activities. There's, no, there's nowhere where it says Lot partook or participated, just that what he saw and what he heard vexed him. Here's how it works. Once we get to the place where we'll just see anything or hear anything, we so grieve the Holy Ghost that we become desensitized to sin around us. You ever note anybody that maybe lost a limb or something? Um, they say that like soldiers who get hurt in battle, maybe they'll lose a, a, a part of the body. Let's just say they lose the leg from the, the knee down, but they'll tell you, I can still feel my toes. I can still, I feel, they're gone, but I can feel myself wiggling those toes. But it's desensitized. It's not there anymore. And if you and I aren't careful with what we see and what we hear, we'll desensitize ourselves to the place where we can just take in garbage, garbage, filth, garbage, filth, garbage, filth, and, and so grieve the Holy Ghost to God. And then when you do that, you can't claim the fact or the thought that, well, if it goes in, as long as it, as long as it passes right through, it ain't defiling me. Oh, no. There's too much Bible that tells you and I we've got to be careful about that stuff. But let me tell you how the balance comes into this message tonight. You ready? You remember what Paul said in 1 Corinthians 5, 9, and 10? He said this. I wrote unto you in an epistle not to keep company with fornicators, yet not altogether with the fornicators of this world, or with the covetous, or with the extortioners, or with the idolaters. Then he said this, for you must needs go out of the world. Here's how it lands. There's no way as a believer that you're going to be able to completely and completely sanitize your life from sin. You're going to have brushes with it. Okay? There are going to be times when you're exposed to it. Matter of fact, some people have tried to do, so, so insulate their lives from the world around them that they've got to the place where they're no good for the commission. God does not want us to get saved and build a bubble. He did put things in the Bible like the doctrine of separation, which tells me and you again, now listen, identify what's worldly, identify what's going to grieve the Holy Spirit, identify what's going to be a negative for your Christian life, not going to, and then put distance between you and it. Right? Don't participate. But when you're in the world, you're going to rub up again. It. The only way to get away from sin is leave the world. Okay? What you got to realize, and what I've got to realize, is as we walk through this thing called life, we have to make sure that we're not allowing our flesh to get comfortable or gain an appetite for those things that will defile us on the inside. See, if you look back in your Bible, you look back in verse number 17, and the first thing he said to him there is this, do you not yet understand that whatsoever entereth in at the mouth goeth into the belly as cast out of the draught? In other words, it never took hold. As you go through life, you're going to have brushes with it. Be careful not to ever let it sink its teeth into you. Don't ever get comfortable enough you make a place for it, as Paul told him over at the church at Ephesus, making a place for the devil, giving a, clearing off a spot, giving him a beachhead, a place to set up camp, you know, in war times, you don't want to give up any of your property, your territory, your homeland. Because if the enemy ever gets a little bit of territory and sets up a, a place where he can then launch the offense of he starts taking more and more of your ground. So this thing about it being on the inside and when it comes to the New Testament economy is not about isolating and living in a bubble. Oh, no. But it's about being wise enough to realize the battle you're in. 
being honest with yourself about things that defile and things that are sin and how I expose the Holy Ghost to them in my life. 